Well, good morning. Great to be with you again as we approach another new week. Yeah, a new week ahead of us. And uh, we're going to be talking about our fruit, the fruit of our lives. I think last week I spoke a little bit about it. And we're going to continue uh, kind of just looking at some things. And the question I want to ask, and this is the question I need to ask you, is this. How fruity is your fruit? Well, good morning. Yes, you are with George at Growth Point, growing as you're going through life. And we are talking about the fruit. And I'm asking you the question, how fruity is your fruit? <laughs> I know. Come on. Some of you are kind of smiling. I know. But again, we, we, we look at, at uh, Galatians. And we look in Galatians 5, it speaks of the fruit, nine fruits of the Spirit. Yeah, now these are the, the fruits of the Spirit that need to be part of our lives. If we're a Christian, then we should have all these fruits activated in and through our lives. Not so. I know some of you are going to struggle with some of them. I know I struggle with some of them. And so we have to constantly remind ourselves that we have to crucify this flesh. Not so. Keep it nailed to the cross, the cross that we are carrying. We need to constantly crucify self. And that is what we got to do when it comes to the fruit of the Spirit of God. Because again, as we've been speaking about love, remember this, the importance of love, loving the way God loves. Now, no, that is difficult. We all struggle in that area to love the way God loves but we have to love because if we do not love then God is not part of our lives because God is love now Galatians 5 22 23 reminds us of the fruit of the spirit now again this is important to note where does it start the fruit starts with love that's right love again if if there is no love as the foundation, we are not going to be able to build upon uh, the fruit of our lives. And again, we will fail in areas because love helps us to be able to contain the rest of the fruits that they are. Now, again, love brings us into joy, brings us into peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, <laughs> and and the biggest of all is self-control. Come on. Now, I think that is the one where some of us really struggle with self-control when it comes to dieting, when it comes to food. Not so. We struggle in those areas. Some of us have uh, addictions within our lives. And again, we, we struggle with those addictions because why? The fruit of the spirit of self-control is lacking and we need to get self-control back into our lives come on these are important things that we have to do now every believing christian should be able to display their spiritual fruit basket but there is a big but yeah but if spiritual fruit is just for display we are in trouble we know what the outcome will be now if fruit is left and is not used <laughs> what happens to it it becomes rotten fruit now, again, all we have to do, we have to use the fruit. The fruit not just needs to be displayed, but it needs to be activated within our lives. And we need to live in accordance to the fruit of the Spirit. Now, we know that one bad apple can and will contaminate the entire basket. All we have to do is ask Adam. Now, I know you didn't eat from the Tapple, we, we know, we don't know what fruit he, he ate from. But the fact is, he allowed the serpent into his life. There was no self-control. He wasn't taking control of the situation. You see, is when we are not taking control and allowing the Holy Spirit to, to help us take control of our life, then you know what? The enemy comes in, and this is what the enemy comes to do. He comes to destroy. Not so. He comes to break us down. Now, again, we live in a a culture that does not want to be judged by the way we live our lives <laughs> we just look around man people want to live their own life they, they they want you to get out of their face not so when when you share with them the gospel of the good news of the lord jesus christ they don't want to listen to you because they want to live their lives they don't want to live under a a conscious uh, of living and and knowing that man if they do something wrong their conscience is going to uh, uh, judge them and so they don't want to live in accordance to that so today's culture man has brought judgment upon himself by rejecting the spiritual and the spirituality of God by fearing the fruit of God not allowing the fruit of God again to be present within their lives we need to be God-fearing people 
hear what I'm saying? We've lost our fear of God. We've lost our reverence towards God. Now Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21, the above, as just above the, the, the fruit of the Spirit, as you're reading the fruit of the Spirit, Spirit uh, in Galatians 5 22, you just go now to verse 19 and you will see how the world lives. Now this is the way the world lives. This is the fruit of the Spirit of the world. Adultery, sexual immorality, look what it goes on to say, uh, spiritism, hatred, fighting, jealousy, anger, selfishness, idol worship, drug abuse, murder, hatred, disrespect, and the list goes on. <laughs> now these, this, this is what the, what the world, and this is how the world is living now. Every evil imaginable has been released into society because man has pushed God out of society, opening the door to evil. As we look at society, human traffic is a major concern in society today slavery is at its worst that it's ever been in the history of man why because man rejects the fruit of the spirit now we need to hold on to god's fruit of god's spirit that needs to be developed in our life through holy spirit so come on why not today embrace jesus christ as lord and savior of your life